is up, FIFA faithful Bearhams here, and welcome to episode two of my Minnesota United career mode. Before we get into the thick of things, let's talk about the first game of the season as Minnesota took on Seattle. All I can say about that game is things can't get worse. Yes, I did predict the Loon's loss, but I didn't think it would be that bad with the second half collapse. What I'd like to do in this segment is talk about three positives and three negatives, but Sadly, I only have two positives out of this, and I'll start with those. First one, I would have to say, is Ramon Avila. Only on the pitch for 30 minutes, his presence brought some sparks of life when he had his two shots. I thought he was nifty with the ball the few times he had it, and I hope for the future he does start over Lud, which he probably will, but he won't be playing in the upcoming game against RSL due to a disciplinary measure. And then our second star of the game, I would have to say, is Dane St. Clair. Yes, he did let in four goals, but he's what kept the Loons in the game for that first half, making saves left and right, including that solid PK save against Ruby Diaz. I think he should at least start next week to prove last week was not a fluke, and I think that will be the case. I don't think that they're going to start Tyler Miller anytime soon. And now we will get to the negatives. I think the biggest one... Sadly was Brett Coleman, the longest tenured loon, had a solid 60 minutes until Seattle just ran rampant over him, and he just made several mistakes. I hope Debassi is better for next week, but he won't be against RSL, so it looks like they are going to bring on Raytala. And I feel he plays better when there's three at the back as opposed to two, so then the other two defenders actually like stay in position. He could be more of like a bulldog who just kind of gets in the way and gets in the face of the opponent attackers. And then I would say the second most disappointing was Will Trap. The problem with the U.S. International, I'd probably say former U.S. International, was not what he did, but what he didn't do. He was kind of like a ghost in that six role. If he keeps up performances like that, I hope Dotson gets the spot there. And that leads us to our final star, or not really a star, but third most disappointing part about that game was just the tactics. Why do you put Hassani Dotson at left mid? That makes no sense. I get he had a solid performance in the Olympic qualifiers where he was going a little more forward. He did score two goals against the Dominican Republic. That was the Dominican Republic. This is Seattle. Slightly higher quality. And I get that you want to play Dotson, but as a Dotson fan, I'm okay with him coming off the bench. Like, don't put him out of position, making him uncomfortable, kind of ruining his flow. Not really his flow, but it's just confidence overall. And I hope that doesn't hurt his confidence moving forward. Hope they can play him at his normal position. And hopefully whoever is able to play left mid actually plays left mid. I heard they're trying to get Fragapane. That's still uh, in discussion, but for the time being... It looks like Dotson will probably play there for the next couple games. As I said earlier, it couldn't get any worse from here. I'm not too worried about this game since the Loons do have a four-game homestand. Time to consolidate some wins in front of the home crowd and learn from mistakes. If I had to give a grade to this performance, it would easily be a C minus D plus. There were some highlights, but a whole lot of lowlights. Easily the best news coming out of this week was the acquisition of designated player Adrian Unu. Now, yes, it's pronounced Unu, not Huno, as I did last episode. I uh, signed him from Stad Rene, $3.6 million. It's crazy now. We used to not have a single striker, only Foster Langsdorf. But now we've acquired Juan Agudelo. Probably going to be a backup. Probably won't be here too long. But then... Just in the span of a couple weeks, Ramona Bila from Boca Juniors and Adrian Uno from one of the better leagues in Europe. Not the best, but it's one of the top five in the uh, Ligue 1. I'm excited to see what he can do. He's usually a super sub striker for Stad Rene, able to score in the later stages of the game. And that, to me, is going to be the perfect spot for him for just starting. He's like, he, he knows how to play in the final 15 minutes, how he studies the game for the first 75, and I'm excited to see what the Frenchman can do. Welcome to the club, Adrian Unu. For today's festivities, we will play the away fixture at PayPal Park against San Jose Earthquakes, then we'll finish it off with the RSL match in the U.S. Open Cup. 
Now for the San Jose Earthquakes game, I'm going to play the team that I want to see from the Loons moving forward. And for RSL, because they're going against RSL today, we will play the team that I probably think will be played. The starting 11, the probable starting 11 for Adrian Heath's Minnesota United. Before we take on San Jose, let's talk about the method to my madness here. A 5-3-2, a different shift as opposed to the usual 4-2-3-1. I've seen the team have success with this formation. And I think having Abila, Unu, and Reynoso up top. And then with Dotson and Gregush as the 6 and the 8 respectively. And then a back 5. I feel like that defense is going to be hard to penetrate. Funny story, last night, I believe the 23rd of April I actually recorded the entire episode but after recording it all getting ready to edit I realized my mic was on mute so this is the second time that I'm recording gameplay I mean I'm not too thrilled to say the least it's just a, a rookie move on my part hopefully I don't do it again but I will probably as Wando able to find Espinoza tries to get a curling shot in but a good save by the Canadian goalkeeper St. Clair San Jose, who's been struggling against Minnesota United in terms of recent results. Uh, whatever they do with their man marking, it just does not work when it comes to Adrian Heath's side. Ewell, Bloomington native, finds Wando, and Wando will score. Great pass by, as I said, the Minnesota born and bred Jackson Ewell as he finds the legend that is Wandolowski. We're already down by one. It's kind of funny with Wando. I used to not like him at all due to the miscue that he had at the 2014 FIFA World Cup. But when you kind of realize what he's done for the league, one thing I would say about San Jose's new kits is that I like them a lot better than the one last year. I still hate their away kits. The yellow and the blue is kind of stupid. And I will finish my review there as that will be the end of the first half. Not the start that we wanted, giving up that goal to Wondolowski, the MLS legend that he is. Got to fix things for the second half. Start of the second half, no changes as of yet, though I do think a couple will be needed. I do want to stretch out their defense, so we'll probably bring on Ludd as well as Ethan Finlay. We'll find Grey Goosh now. Possibly a chance here on the run. Thought Unu would have a run, but Grey Goosh going to have to hold the ball. Oh, that's a good through ball. I don't think he's onside, though. He actually is. A chance for a ball inward. Finds Abila. Easily our best chance of the game. A great run by Metinair. And now there's a chance possibly for San Jose. Is Salinas galloping down. We'll get the ball taken away by Gregush. Is now once again a chance for us. Might be a run here. Unu is onside. Unu, chance for his first goal. Takes it and scores. What an equalizer. It's a bit of a track meet for the past couple minutes. Back and forth, counterattacks. But it's us, the Frenchman, getting his first goal. A great pass by Grey Goosh. Replay there. Able to thread that through the defenders. Unu able to twist his body around. Get to it. Put it past Vega. Now we could possibly steal the victory from San Jose. Good through ball. Unu does see a run by Grey Goosh. He does get through. Gregush, oh, tries to go for the chip, but it will be a corner regardless. Ball passing about. There's a run by Gregush. He's through. A chance for Jan Gregush. Yes, he gets it. That might just be the game-winning goal. First, he had an assist to get the game-tying goal, but it looks like the Slovakian will seal the deal at PayPal Park as Ewell. Has scored from that distance before, though. It says poked away by Grey Goosh. We'll stay with San Jose, though. Once again, a great interception by Grey Goosh. Says there's a chance here. Agudelo does have some speed to him. Can he get past Linus? Oh, able to get a deflection here. Takes the chip. Puts it in. What a way to finish. Juan Agudelo off the bench with the cheeky chip over Alexis Vega. San Jose in despair. Great technique here by Agudelo, the third choice striker. Filling in for Unu to get a goal as well. Looks like we have the three points with the three goals. For the second and final game, this is the team that I imagine Adrian Heath will put out. Reynoso at Cam, as usual. Gregush and Trap at their center mid spots. Finlay on the right. 
think Dotson's going to be on the left side once again, and we'll have Lud up top with Gasper, Raytala, Boxel, and Metinair as the back four. And I'm hoping St. Clair gets another start between the sticks. You do not know how excited I am to finally go to a Minnesota United game. I am going to the game tonight. It's the first game with fans since October of 2019. And the last time I was able to sing Wonderwall there was September 2019. It's been a year and a half. It feels like an eternity, but I'm just so relieved to finally get the most out of my season tickets. I was at Boxel on him. Boxel able to stop him for a little bit, but it's going to find Portillo. Portillo with a shot, but a great save by Dane St. Clair. But it will stay in for RSL. Julio starts that through to Krylak with the shot and the goal. Yet again, another early goal conceded. So if we can just get the ball in quickly, which won't happen as that ball is intercepted. And we'll head to the tunnel with a 1-0 deficit. Early goal by Krylak. Just opened up our defense easily. And yeah, slow day for Lud. So we, once again, hope to have some magic in the second half. Oh, yep, that's a goal. Defense once again cut up. Not looking too hot today. Perhaps that through to Grey Goosh. Grey Goosh. Trying to get more players involved. Reynoso. Tries to get an opening here. Takes the shot and scores. We do half the deficit here. Reynoso. Able to find an acre of space. Puts it to the other corner of the net. Might have a chance to equalize here. Maybe another chance here. McMaster is through. Trying to get that angle on Herrera, but he'll have to hold on to it. Still holding on to it. Finds Agudelo. Agudelo slips that through. Reynoso takes the shot and scuffs it, though it looks like it did take a deflection. So we'll have a chance for a corner here. So we will bring on Reynoso for that corner kicking capabilities. Whips one in a little too close to the goalie, but it will find Boxel. Boxel takes a shot and scores! Unbelievable in stoppage time. It is Michael Boxel of all people. Just volleys the ball to himself. We might have survived here, but then again, it is a cup match, so it looks like we will be going into overtime if this result holds. Funny to say that is the goal of the season. Goal of the save, and that should have been saved by the keeper putting up. Adrian Heath is crazy about it. Okay, we might actually squeak out of this one. So that'll do it for the first 90 minutes. We will most likely go to an extra time. So we're just going to pass it. Kill time here. Finlay will clear it up. We are going to go into penalty kicks. First up, we have Ozzy Alonso. I'm just going to do this strategy. And it doesn't work. Straight to the keeper it goes. Not the start we wanted. So now it's St. Clair. Guesses the wrong way against Rusnak as we're already one down now. Agudelo looking to put it into that right side. And he will. Keeper stayed home. Now it's Krylak's turn. Krylak goes the same way as well as St. Clair. So we're still one down. It's now Reynoso. Looking to put it in that top left corner. Which he will. Not quite, but able to get it in regardless. Now Miram, he goes the same way. Still guessing wrong here. Oh no! Finley skies it over and now it's down to Everton Louise. So maybe give them the win, but a good save by St. Clair. So we're still at least in it. Justin McMaster. Now it's his turn. What you will, top corner. Well placed. Now St. Clair just needs to make another save. And he won't. Straight down the middle. RSL will advance to the next round of the U.S. Open Cup. Does suck we're not going forward, but... Yeah. We'll just go for the MLS Cup then. That's the real cup. Despite losing against RSL, we are still atop of the leaderboard with that come from behind victory against San Jose. Now we will preview this home opener game against RSL. So here is RSL's lineup. We did play them 
They did beat us, and with the lineup that we have, it's going to be a lot closer than I expected. I was going to predict 3-1 loons, but I'm thinking a solid 2-1 victory will do for the home opener. We will be singing Wonderwall, and it will be glorious just to be back with fans once again watching the game that we love, simply put. So that's my preview for the upcoming game, match day two of this MLS season. And I think that's just going to be the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed watching as much as you're playing it. Be sure to like, subscribe, and I will see you for episode three. This has been Bear Hams, and as always, to the loop.